The CH-51450 PicoScope is a computer software-based noise, vibration, and harshness, or NVH, tool. This tool has several important components for NVH diagnosis, the most important being a computer with the PicoScope software loaded, a PicoScope and the USB cable that connects it to the computer, the lead that connects the PicoScope and the NVH interface, the NVH interface box, the accelerometer or vibration sensor cable and the accelerometer sensor protector to keep the magnet clean. And finally, the multiple diagnostic interface or MDI. Connect the PicoScope to the computer by connecting the USB cable to the USB ports on both devices. When connected correctly, a red LED light will illuminate. Next, connect the accelerometer sensor to the NVH interface box. The sensor lead connector is keyed so that it can only be inserted one way. Next, tighten the threaded locking collar. The box's red LED will blink to indicate a connection. Note that the NVH interface box has an internal battery that may need to be changed periodically. Leaving the cables attached to the box will drain the battery more quickly. Now, connect the signal cable to the NVH interface box and to channel B of the PicoScope. Channel B is reserved for the accelerometer. To begin diagnosis, place the accelerometer sensor on the driver's seat track to get a base reading. Once you have the base reading, move the sensor to the responding component to determine where the vibration is coming from. Locations, such as the steering column and door armrest, are most commonly used to pinpoint the origin of the vibration. Now that we've shown you the components, Let's take a closer look at the PicoScope NVH software. To help with configuring the software to the vehicle being worked on, a setup wizard is used to input the vehicle data to the software. This setup wizard will come up each time a new NVH test is started. Start out by clicking the Start a New Test button on the PicoScope setup wizard. This is going to start the software so it can search for the PicoScope and MDI to make sure they are both connected to the computer and ready to use. The MDI is used to retrieve vehicle information such as vehicle speed, wheel speed, prop shaft speed, and engine RPM, as well as the transmission gear. In addition, the MDI software should be updated before using it with the PicoScope. The next screen in the setup wizard will display a green check mark when the MDI is connected and operating properly. Press Next to continue. Enter the vehicle engine information on this screen. The first pull-down menu allows you to choose between inline and V-type engines. The second pull-down menu allows you to select the number of cylinders for the engine in the vehicle. Select Next to continue. This screen allows you to select the vehicle drivetrain. The selections include rear-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, and four-wheel drive. Enter the vehicle's rear differential ratio on this screen and select the Next button. Now enter the vehicle tire size. The Use the same value for both tires checkbox allows the tire size to be entered once for the front and rear tires. If the box is unchecked, the software allows a different tire size to be entered for the front and rear. The tire correction factor can also be entered if applicable. When the tire size has been entered, select the next button to continue. This screen identifies where the accelerometer is physically located on the vehicle and the type of sensor used. Select Next to continue. On this screen, we can test the sensor signal quality by tapping on the sensor. The strength of the signal can be verified on the bar graph. Once a good signal has been verified, select Next to continue. This screen instructs you to attach the accelerometer to the seat track to ensure consistent baseline testing. After baseline testing is complete, the sensor can be moved to the area where the vibration is most prevalent, the steering wheel, for example. Select Next to continue. To complete the setup wizard, select Finish. In the following example, the truck has an induced vibration that replicates a prop shaft concern. Select the Start Recording button and begin to bring the vehicle up to speed. The bottom graph shows a red line which represents the vehicle speed, while the blue line is engine RPM. Notice as the vehicle reaches the speed when the vibration occurs, you will see the black line on the bottom graph get wider. The top graph shows the P1 or prop shaft 1 parameter reading of about 25 to 29 millijes. Once the appropriate data is gathered, 
select the Stop Recording button. At this time, it's recommended that you save the data. To save the file, select File, and then select Save. A Details box will appear that allows you to save the file with the customer name and vehicle information. Note that these saved files can be sent by email to a field service representative and a technical assistance center representative. Another feature of this software is the signal marker. A signal marker allows the recording to be marked or flagged at the time of the vibration, or if something intermittent or surprising happens. The blue arrows at the bottom of the screen allow the user to move from one signal marker to another. When reviewing the file, a section on the bottom graph can be highlighted and reviewed. In addition, the highlighted section can be moved forward or backward to view more data. The data is in two-second increments as shown by the numbers under the graph. The five buttons across the bottom of the top graph along the left-hand side allow the information to be shown differently depending on the button selected. These five buttons are bar graph, road speed, RPM order, 3D frequency, and frequency. On the 3D frequency screen, you can zoom in and turn the graph to better see concerns on the recording. You can also click on each vibration to bring up the Vibrate Help screen. In this case, you get the explanation for a first order prop shaft speed related vibration. At the bottom of the screen, there's a playback function that allows the user to move to any point in the recording. The recording can also be used to show the customer the vibration before and after the repair. Another feature of the software is the Add Vibration button. This button allows you to add vibrations from different components like the engine, power steering system, alternator, water pump, and the AC compressor. You can also display unknown vibrations. These are vibrations that do not line up with any components on the vehicle. Examples of these vibrations can be caused by road conditions. The PicoScope also provides two methods for balancing a drive shaft. In addition to the PicoScope's NVH-related components, several additional components are required for drive shaft balancing. The Remote Optical Sensor, or ROS, is aimed at a reflective target on the drive shaft to measure its rotational speed. It uses a red LED light source for targeting. The ROS connects to the optical sensor interface. The optical sensor interface then connects to the PicoScope. The optical sensor interface has an internal battery that may need to be changed periodically. The optical sensor base allows the ROS to be properly positioned on the vehicle. The base is magnetic. With the software running and the PicoScope connected, select Balancing in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Select your preferred balancing method, either Pinion Flange Trial Balance or Hose Clamp Trial Balance. This video will focus on the Hose Clamp method. The Pinion Flange method is similar. A wizard is available to step you through the process until you become more familiar with it. The wizard will confirm that the PicoScope is connected. Click Next. The wizard then requests that the accelerometer be connected to channel B of the PicoScope. Once the accelerometer cable is connected, gently tap the sensor to verify the signal. The signal quality indicator should react to the tapping. If not, Check the cable connection at channel B. Click Next if everything checks out. The wizard then directs that the accelerometer should be mounted on the differential. Once it is, click Next in the setup wizard. The next step is to connect the ROS to channel D of the PicoScope. The ROS should be connected to the optical sensor interface. The optical sensor interface is then connected to channel D. Pass your hand back and forth in front of the ROS and confirm that the wizard is detecting a signal. If it is, click Next. The next step is to position the ROS. At the drive shaft, apply a 12 millimeter or half inch piece of the supplied reflective tape. To get the best performance from the reflective tape, first wrap the drive shaft with an adhesive tape that has a non-reflective surface. Mount the optical sensor base to a suitable surface. Position the ROS so that the red light hits the reflective tape at an angle about 15 degrees from perpendicular. The green on-target light on the back of the sensor confirms that the red light is hitting the target. The next step is to attach two hose clamps to the drive shaft. On both clamps, mark the band where it leaves the adjusting screw. Remove both clamps. 
Use the marks to trim the excess band from both clamps. Return to the wizard and enter the weight of the hose clamps. For help with the trimming process and determining the weight of the clamps, click on the links in the wizard. The next step is to measure the drive shaft circumference. A metric measuring tape is included in the PicoScope kit. Enter the measurement into the wizard. The value for diameter will update automatically. After clicking Next, the wizard provides a list of checks that should be performed prior to starting the balance check. The next step is to select an RPM for the test. Since it will have to be maintained for a period of time, the wizard helps a technician find an RPM value that is easy to hold steady. With the vehicle on the lift and the ROS in position, watch the wizard while running the engine in high gear. Slowly accelerate to highway speed, 66 to 70 miles per hour. The RPM display will turn green when a stable speed is achieved. Once it turns green, the RPM value is automatically entered in the box. The value in the box is constantly updated until the RPM value is no longer stable and the display turns red. The last green value is saved. You can also manually enter a value in the box if you prefer. Click Next to complete the setup wizard. The PicoScope balancing screen has several areas. In the upper left are the hose clamp positioning instructions. In the upper right is the RPM readout from the ROS. The test completion bar graph is also in this section. In the lower left are the test instructions and the scrolling readout from the accelerometer. In the lower right are the indicators for which test run is being conducted as well as the averaged vibration signal display. With the accelerometer in place, position one of the hose clamps on the drive shaft with the adjustment screw aligned with the reflective tape. The adjustment screw of this clamp should be marked as position zero. It may be helpful to have tape wrapped around the drive shaft for marking purposes. Position the second clamp with its adjustment screw at the indicated distance from position zero in the direction of rotation. Return to the PicoScope and click on the green Initial Run button to begin the test. Put the vehicle in high gear. Slowly and steadily accelerate to the RPM entered earlier. When the RPMs are in the desired range, the display turns green. The test complete bar graph will track test progress. When the bar reaches 100%, decelerate before shifting to neutral. The hose clamp placement instructions will update to indicate where to reposition the clamps. New clamp positions always reference the distance from position zero in the direction of rotation. With the clamps repositioned, click on the Calibration Run 1 green button. Again, slowly and steadily accelerate until the RPMs are in the desired range. Once Calibration Run 1 completes, refer to the new clamp placement instructions. Reposition the clamps as instructed. Calibration Run 2 and Calibration Run 3 are completed in the same way. Each time, the software will request that the hose clamps be placed in certain positions. After Calibration Run 3 completes, the software not only indicates where the clamp should be moved to, but also indicates the location of the original imbalance with a red arrow. The blue arrow indicates the location of the counterbalance. The new positioning of the hose clamps is designed to achieve this counterbalance. After repositioning the clamps to the new locations, click the green Verification button to run a final check to confirm the prop shaft is balanced. The instruction area will indicate the results of the verification. The free run test gives technicians the opportunity to make further clamp placement adjustments to fine-tune the drive shaft balance if desired. Free run is only available after a successful verification.